Good morning. Amen, amen. Good morning, West Hudson. Good morning. We'll just give a, we'll just give a few moments if everyone wants to start logging in. But as we wait, let's just open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning. We thank you, Father God, for waking us up this morning, for giving us another day of life. Lord God, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning that you've given us. Father God, we thank you, we glorify you, we worship you, Lord God, for you are worthy to be praised. Lord God, we, we just ask that as we wait for, for people to log on, I ask that you visit them at their, at their homes where they are right now, Lord God. Lord God, that you may bless them on this day, Lord Father. Lord God, if there's anybody that's going through, through allergies or, or, or sickness, Lord God, we pray and we ask for healing this morning, Lord God. That you may touch their bodies, that you may restore them, Lord God. Father God, we pray for those right now that are that are struggling uh, with work. We pray that that you find them, that you watch over them financially, Lord Father. Lord God, that you may find them work, Lord God. That you, Lord God, may watch and protect over them, Lord God. Father God, this time of 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 this time is a very uh, stressful time where people are home. Uh, some may not even uh, are used to being home this much, Lord God. And sometimes depression can can just take a hold of, of, of one, Lord God. We pray right now for those people, Lord God, that you, Lord God, may, may bring joy in, and peace in this time of of. Of, of pandemic, Lord God, where everyone is, has to be stay, where everyone has to stay home, where all the social distance, distancing keeps us from, from going out and spending time with our friends and with our loved ones, Lord Father. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that despite of all of this that's going on around us, Lord God, that you are still there. You are still with us, Lord God. You are still the great I am, Lord Father. You are still King of King and Lord of Lords. Lord God, you are still in control in the midst of chaos. You are still in control in the midst of confusion, Lord God. And we worship you and we thank you, Lord God. As long as we keep our eyes on you, Lord God, nothing else matters. Lord God, we thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for everyone right now, Lord God, wherever they are, whatever they're doing at this very moment, Lord Father. We pray, Lord God, that you watch over them, protect them, keep them safe, Lord yes. God. We just worship you, Lord God. Father, forgive us, Lord Father. If there has been anything that we have done against your will, if we have angered you, if we have offended you, if we have saddened you or disappointed you, Lord God, we pray for your forgiveness, Father. Lord God, we come humbly before you, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we thank you as we prepare to worship you, Lord God, that you may, that you may open up our hearts, Lord God, and prepare it for worship, Lord God, for you are worthy, you are worthy of it all, Lord God. Yes. And so we thank you in Jesus' precious name, amen. I'm going to be reading from Psalms 33 this morning. I'm reading uh, the Passion Translation of Psalms 33. It says, it's time to sing and shout for joy. Go ahead, all you redeemed ones, do it. Praise him with all you have, for a praise looks lovely on the lips of God's lovers. Play the guitar as you lift your praises loaded with thanksgiving. Sing and make joyous music with all you've got inside. Compose new melodies that release new praises to the Lord. Play his praises on instruments with the anointing and skill he gives you. Sing and shout with passion. Make a spectacular sound of joy. For God's word is something to sing about. He is true to his promises. His word can be trusted. And everything he does is reliable and right. The Lord loves seeing justice on the earth. Anywhere and everywhere you can find his faithful, unfailing love. All he had to do was speak by a spirit when command. And God created the heavenlies, filled with galaxies and stars, the vast cosmos he wonderfully made. His voice scooped out the seas, 
the ocean depths he poured into vast reservoirs. Now, with breathtaking wonder, let everyone worship Yahweh, this awe-inspiring creator. Words he breathed and worlds were birthed. Let there be, and there it was, springing forth the moment he spoke, no sooner said than done. With his breath he scatters the schemes of nations who oppose him. They will never succeed. His destiny plan for the earth stands sure. His forever plan remains in place and will never fail. Blessed and prosperous is that nation who has God as their Lord. They will be the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks over us from where he rules in heaven, gazing into every heart from his lofty dwelling place. He observes all the peoples of the earth. The creator of our hearts considers and examines everything we do. Even if the king has the best equipped army, it would never be enough to save him. Even if the best warrior went to battle, he could not be saved simply by his strength alone. Human strength and the weapons of man are false hopes for victory. They, seem, they may seem mighty, but they will always disappoint. The eyes of the Lord are upon even the weakest worshipers who love him, those who wait in hope and expectation for the strong, steady love of God. God will deliver them from death, even the certain death of famine, with no one to help. The Lord alone is our radiant hope, and we trust in him with all our hearts. His wraparound presence will strengthen us. As we trust, we rejoice with an uncontained joy flowing from Yahweh. Let your love and steadfast kindness overshadow us continually, for we trust and we wait upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. We bless your name, Yahweh. We, we exalt you, God. We thank you for your wraparound love, God. We thank you that we are able to worship the one that, that just spoke and, and, and the stars were created, the one who spoke and there was a light. God, we thank you that you breathe breath into dust and, and, and you formed man, God. We thank you, Father. May your praise be continually on our lips. May we never forget, God, to worship you and to honor you, God, for all you've done, for who you are, for your vastness, for your greatness, God. We stand in awe of you, Father, today. May you receive all the glory and all the honor that you deserve, God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. Every time I see you, 
Praise, 
your praise will ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Holy Lord. Our hearts will 
Good morning, church. We just want to take some time right now to just thank the Lord for his amazing love. The songs we just sang were, Lord, I'm amazed by you. Aren't we just amazed by his love this morning? Beautiful sun outside, a beautiful day. Aren't we amazed by his love? The song we sang before this said, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. And I was just, as we were singing that song, I was just thinking about the fact that if you're hearing my voice right now, if you're able to join us live, it's by God's grace, it's because of his breath in our lungs that we can be here together, even if it's virtually. We praise you, O Lord, we worship you. Let's just take some time, wherever you are, to just give him all the glory. Just thank him, no matter what situation you find yourselves in. His love is amazing. His love for us is amazing. 
Father, this morning, I just thank you. I thank you for this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your breath in our lungs. We thank you for your mercy, your love that never fails. We thank you because you are with us always. We thank you and we bless your name. It's by your mercies that we are not consumed. Father, Lord, I commit the rest of this service into your hands, Lord. Father, I just pray that you just silence every voice in my mind right now. I pray that you just take absolute control. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that is able to take even the foolish things of this world, oh God, and make it wise. So Lord, I pray that you will just speak today. That Lord, everyone that's hearing, oh God, that's seeing, oh God, will have ears to hear and eyes to see. That Lord, every hardened heart will be softened and that your will will be done and that your name and your name alone will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. I hope all of you are well. I know that although the sun is shining, we're still on lockdown and it's been a, a very long time. For me personally, this is the first time I'm stepping out of my house into another building and it feels very, very strange and surreal. But we just thank the Lord for all that he is, because the word says, in everything, we give thanks. So we give thanks. This morning, I have the privilege, thanks to my lovely husband and pastor of this church, to bring the word. I just want to thank him for always supporting me and also pushing me out of my comfort zone, because as you all know, I don't really like screens and cameras and live streams, but I thank the Lord for his grace is sufficient for me and his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Today, the topic that I'm going to be preaching on is, are you under the shadow? Are you under the shadow? Now, I know today is Pentecost Sunday and everybody might have been expecting a word on the Holy Spirit but the Holy Spirit speaks through many different ways. He speaks through his word. And today we're talking about, are you under the shadow? And this came three weeks ago when we were in corporate prayer. As you know, we have our corporate prayers every Friday. And three weeks ago, I shared that I heard the Lord saying, step out of the shadows. I didn't know exactly what that meant, step out of the shadows. But I shared it anyway in obedience, hoping that maybe somebody who joined the prayer meeting that day needed to hear that word and it would resonate with them. But after the prayer ended and I was sitting there thinking about it and meditating on it, the Lord told me that I need to step out of the shadows. The word is for me. And one of the areas where he was telling me I need to step out of the shadows is my reluctance to step forward in a forum like this and also speak publicly and to speak the word. But he also said he wanted me to share this same word with you. Step out of the shadows. As I study the word and the scriptures more, I realize that it's not just about stepping out of the shadows, it's about what shadow are you under? And that's where the title, Are You Under the Shadow, comes from. So what is a shadow? I'm sure I don't really have to explain it. I'm sure everybody knows what a shadow is. But a simple definition is a shadow is a dark shape that is formed when an object blocks a source of light. Right? An object blocks a source of light. So what is this source of light? Right? If we, we may be under a shadow and it might be caused because something is, is obstructing light, well, what is that obstruction? What is the source of light? 
So let's start with the source of light. Let's open to John chapter 8, verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Jesus is saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. What's interesting is when Jesus was speaking these very words, he was standing in the temple and he was actually in the treasury part of the temple where the offerings were put. And also there were candles burning to symbolize the pillar of fire that led the people of Israel through the wilderness. The pillar of fire represented God's presence, protection, and guidance. We see this in Exodus chapter 13 from verses 21 to 22. That's Exodus 13, 21 to 22, which reads, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. In a sense, Jesus is standing in the temple saying, I am your source of life. Just like the sun gives light to the world, I am your source of life. I am God's presence. I am your guidance. Now, the people of that day recon recognize that Jesus is claiming to be God at this point. He's saying, I am the name that's used to represent Yahweh. God of all the earth. And he's saying, I am your life. I am the God that led you. I am the God that provided the pillar. I am your source of life. We see this mentioned in John chapter one, verse four, where it says, in him was life. And this life was the light of men. Psalm 36 verse nine says, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. So what is the source of light? The source, the light source is Jesus. Our existence depends on Jesus's sustaining power. As the light, Jesus exposes God to us. And as the light, he also exposes sin. In his light, we see ourselves as we really are, sinners in need of a savior. In his light, we see ourselves as we really are. But remember, we're talking about, are you under the shadow, right? So we've talked about the shadow is when an object, when there is an obstruction to the source of light. And we've just described that the light source is Jesus. And sometimes there are obstructions to that light source, to Jesus' work in our life. Jesus says, back to John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. We have to follow Jesus. We have to follow the light. Jesus is the light, but we have shadows because there are obstacles blocking the light. Notice obstacles blocking the light. So when there is a shadow, the light is still on. It doesn't mean you're in darkness. It doesn't mean you don't know Jesus. It just means there is something obstructing the light. You can be looking at a shadow, someone else's shadow, or you can be in the shadow itself. Shadows can only occur when the light is shining. So yes, I'm talking to believers. I'm talking to myself. In fact, I'm staring at myself in a screen right now. So I'm definitely talking to myself too. 
Shadows occur when the light is shining. You can be surrounded by light, but be under a shadow. So what is this obstruction that causes the shadow? It could be many, it could be one. Hebrews tells us to lay aside every sin and the, every weight and the sin that easily besets us so that we can run the race. A lot of the times we talk about sin and sin is deadly, we know this, but we often forget to talk about the weights that also hold us back and stop us from living the life that God has called us to live. Now, I'm hoping that as I speak to you, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you whatever the obstacles are in your life, because I cannot necessarily go through every single example and not everything may relate, but God knows how to take, you know, what I'm saying and translate that into what is actually going on with you right now. But the only true way to know what the obstacle is in your life, what that shadow is, is to expose yourself to the light, to expose yourself to Jesus. We can only see the dirt when the light is on. Psalm 139, verse 23 to 24. That's Psalm 139, 23 to 24. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Again, we can be surrounded by light, but not recognize we're under the shadow until we're willing to come to God and say, search me, O God, and know my heart. The word of God says in Jeremiah that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Sometimes we deceive ourselves. We think everything is okay. But God calls us to a place where he wants us to come to him, get in his word and understand that it's not okay. We are not okay. I am not okay. Ultimately, the ultimate obstruction is sin. Many of us deny sin, but God, I believe, I'm not saying he caused COVID-19, I'm not saying that, oh, he's raining down fire and judgment, but I do believe he allows, he has allowed COVID-19, right? There's nothing, God is suffering and nothing can happen on this earth that he does not allow. And I believe that he's allowed COVID-19 pandemic to expose some of the shadows or the shadows in our life. I'm sure he's exposed some shadows in your faith. I'm sure he's exposed shadows in your family some of you may not have had to stay at home with your partner, with your husband or your wife for so long. Some of you are now getting, I would say some of us are getting to know our children. We're spending more time at home together and it's exposing some of the shadows that we have been under. It's exposing the shadows of our priority because now we suddenly find ourselves with maybe a bit more time even though the schedule can be crazy, some people think, oh, yeah, I, I, I like the, the memes of people who are, have kids or they're like pulling their hair up because they're homeschooling, they're daycare, they're working. Well, some other person's now got time to do more exercise and all the hobbies that they've um, wanted to do. But we all have our different challenges and our different experiences during this time. But one thing I believe every single one of us, of us have been exposed to ourselves. We've been exposed to the foundations that are cracked. We've been exposed to things that are out of whack, out of place. We've been exposed to the shadows of our society. We've been exposed to even the shadows of the church. Second Chronicles, Chronicles 7.14, that's Second Chronicles 7.14, says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. We've been quoting this verse, saying this verse, praying this verse 
throughout this year, even before we knew of the pandemic. But listen to this, it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, go to the end, it says, he will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. One thing I know is that God doesn't lie. He doesn't lie. So it's here clearly that he will hear us, forgive our sin and heal our land. So I constantly question myself with all the prayers. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying God is not on the move. But we have seen sorrow. We have seen suffering. We have seen death. We have seen devastation. And it's not like there was a sifting between the righteous and the unrighteous. No, there are believers that are suffering, that have died. And it's not just in COVID-19. It, that's not the only sickness, that's not the only pandemic. We see suffering every day. But God does not lie. So one question I ask myself is, am I humble? Do I humble myself to the Lord? Do I humble myself to his word? Is he in complete control? Do I repent? Do I turn from my wicked ways? Or do I just pray because it seems like the right thing to do? Because it makes me feel like I'm doing something, but not actually doing what the Lord has asked me to do. So back to the shadows. Shadows can be described in the following ways. Shade is a shadow. Darkness can be as a result of a shadow. And an imperfect and faint representation of who you are is how a shadow can be represented. And it can be described as something that follows someone. It's, where, it's with you wherever you go. So let's talk about the first one, shade. Shade is what something we recognize as a very good thing, right? We look for shade. The sun is starting to shine now. It's starting to get very hot. We are going to be looking for cover. We are going to be looking for shade to hide under. We are going to be running to that shaded place under a tree, or you're going to have that umbrella up or whatever it is to keep yourself away from the heat of the sun, to shade yourself from the heat of the sun. But we can do that in our lives as well. We can keep running to our comfort place. We can keep running to familiar things. Some examples, actually before I go into that, one thing I noticed is that as much as shade can be good, it also stunts growth. It can inhibit growth. I'm starting to learn a lot more about grass and plants and nature because I see it a lot more now that I've moved to Kani. And when you've got a shaded area of grass, it's vulnerable to be overtaken by weeds. You can see that it doesn't thrive as the same way as the grass in the open light. It's not the same color. Sometimes it doesn't grow as fast. But also, it also allows for things that are not meant to be there to start overtaking, AKA weeds. What do we run to? What is the comfort place that we run to that is stunting our growth? Are you under the shadow of comfort? Some examples of this comfortable place can be religion. Yes, we are Christians. But our Christianity is, represents a relationship with God, to be Christ-like, to be followers of Christ, which means we have to know Christ, not just rules, not just routines, not just schedules. Hebrews 10 verse 1 says, For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. 
Just going to church does not make us Christians. Not being born, just being born into the Christian religion does not make us Christians. Being born in a Christian country does not, necess- does not make us Christians. Having a relationship with Christ, believing and accepting Jesus Christ, the source of light, as your Lord and Savior. In his light, we see light. In his life, he's the one that died to set us free and give us life. He died for you and me. And that is who we are serving and worshiping and coming into relationship with. Not a structure, not a law, not a routine, not a building. Acts chapter 7, verse 48 says, However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says. We could have become so comfortable with coming to church every Sunday, going through our usual routine, lifting up holy hands, speaking in tongues and prophesying amongst ourselves, feeling very good but not recognizing that we're just comfortable going through the motions. How do you know you may have been under that shadow of comfort? Or what happened when that that comfort was taken away? How has your spiritual life been when there has been no church building? How has your worship been when we can't come together and feed off the corporate energy? Don't get me wrong, I miss church. Like, I've been asking God the same question. Like, why is it that when I worship you at home, it doesn't feel the same as when I'm with other believers. So I'm not trying to say there isn't a difference with corporate worship because there truly is. But can you still worship God when you're by yourself in your home? Do you still worship? Do you still get in the word? Or are you waiting for the church to open its doors again before you operate in faith, before you worship the Lord your maker. Legalism is another comfort place, holding ourselves to rules and regulations. Because I prayed this amount of time and at this time every single day, oh, because I wear a dress a certain way or because I'm part of a certain ministry, that means I'm completely in the light of God. No, the work that you're doing may be your obstacle because you think that you are saved by those works but the lord says our righteousness is like filthy rags we are not saved by our works it's by the grace of god another comfort place can be our past and present relationships second corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 that second corinthians Chapter 6, verse 17 says, Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. Is there a relationship that God had asked you to stop, that you keep running back to because that's your comfort place? Is there a relationship that you're in that God has asked you to come out from, but you stay because it's your comfort place? That could be the obstruction, blocking the light of God in your life. Are you under the shadow? Another shadow is, like I mentioned, another description can be darkness. Darkness. Psalm 107, verse 10. Psalm 107, verse 10. says, those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and iron. John chapter 3, verse 19 to 20. John chapter 3, verse 19 to 20 says, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. 
For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Some of us are in darkness because we love it. It's just as simple as that. We love what we're doing. We love the pleasure. We know God has told us to stop, but we want to keep doing it because it feels good. Right? But that's not the case for everybody. Some of us, it's depression, especially during this time. Many people have come under the shadow of depression. Anxiety, deep distress. Maybe for you it's bitterness. Maybe it's rejection. Maybe it's past or current abuse. One thing that the Lord has been speaking to me so much about during this COVID period is, COVID-19 period is domestic violence. Some of you might be listening to my voice right now and because you're stuck at home, you've been under a shadow of significant abuse from family members or from partners. And if that's you, I want to say, I know it's difficult to speak out. I know it's difficult to talk about things like this, but I do pray that you reach out. You can find the details of our, our office email on YouTube if you click to the About page or if you go to Facebook, West Hudson Christian Center, or if you go to our website, you can find the information to get in contact so that we can put you in connection with the appropriate resources. Another type of shadow is a description of a shadow is an imperfect or faint representation. Have you ever looked at your shadow and thought, wow, I look so tall, much taller than I really look. Or I look so short, look at the shadows making me short. Or the worst for a female, right? When it makes you look chubby and fat, much fatter than you, you actually are. What does this represent for us, right? Well, these can represent insecurity, fear, right? Lord was telling me to step out from under a shadow, right? Because I don't want to stand here right now speaking to you. Why is that? What am I afraid of? God has not given us the spirit of fear. Do we believe that? Do we trust in his word? His perfect love casts out all fear. So if his perfect love casts out all fear, why would we entertain fear? It's another obstacle blocking the light of God from shining in our life. I was so blessed this past week when someone I know very, very well stepped out of their comfort zone. And I was just amazed by the way God used that person. And I just think, imagine how many people, how many lives would be transformed, how many lives would be changed, how many of us would be more encouraged if we would stop hiding under our shadows and step into the light that God has given us and reflect his light. He's not even calling us to reflect ourselves. He's saying, step into his light. He wants to reflect his glory in our lives. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you sound like. It doesn't matter what, where you were educated or what you have or don't have, what job you have or don't have. What matters is he's calling you. Don't let your insecurity, don't let fear hold you back from who God has called you to be. Don't let that be the obstacle, stopping his light from shining in your life. Another imperfect or faint representation can be preachers and prophets, false preachers and prophets. In this COVID period, we are having church online. So even as I'm speaking to you right now, you can just click to another live view. You can be back and forth. You could have decided to go and do worship over somewhere, somewhere there and come back here. And when this finishes, you're going to tune into another preacher. Praise God, it's amazing how the abundance of the word is. I'm not trying to say you should only listen to one thing and not the other, but you must be aware. Not everybody that says Lord is actually surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. We must test every prophecy. We must test 
every preaching. We must get in the word for ourselves and say, is this really what God says? Is this in the word? Is this scripture? Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 14. That's Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 14. It says, they have also healed the hurt of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. You see, some of us may be under a false comfort because we're only hearing the things that we want to hear. We're only listening to what we want to listen to, but it's not what God is actually saying to you and I today. Pastor has been preaching a series on prayer, speaking to God and hearing from God. And it amazes me. Sometimes I'm like, oh, honey, are you still going to preach on this again and again? And God will say to me, why, why are you saying that? People are still not speaking to me. People are still not hearing from me. He has to continuously talk about this until people will listen, until people will change, until there is transformation. And so, yes, you may be hearing certain things over and over and over again, but it's because God is trying to get through to you. You may, be get, you may be tired of hearing it, but God is chasing after you, saying it's you I'm after. Stop hardening your heart and humble yourself and listen. I want a relationship with you. Another type of shadow or description of shadow is something that follows someone. And I think here we get to the crux of things, right? This is, when, this is usually when you are the obstacle blocking the light, right? You have a shadow when you are blocking the light source. How are you blocking the light of God from shining in your life? Some things we like to put down to our personality. Sometimes it truly is demonic activity that's following you. And that demonic activity, needs to, we need to take authority over it and cast it out. Sometimes something, the thing that can be following you is a soul tie, soul tie. When you've been in a relationship with someone and you're knitted together, most of the time it happens when you've been involved sexually and you're tied, your whole mind and your body, everything is tied to that person and you're no longer in a relationship with them, but you still keep thinking about them. It's like they're still with you everywhere. These are things that it takes significant prayer and coming to the Lord and, and staying in the word of God to really break this kind of activity, this type of soul type. But then there's your character, pride, gluttony. Sometimes we don't talk about our, our, our lack of self-control, not eating the right things, not doing, not being disciplined, not doing what we said we were going to do procrastinating. God tells us to do something and we're like, yeah, 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 tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And tomorrow never comes. And let's talk about society today. Right now, there is a big obstacle blocking the light of God everywhere right now. And that is racism, the subject of racism. Let's not, you know, dance around the subject. Let's just call it what it is, just like we've called everything else. It's sin. It's sin, sin, sin. God hates it. It's simple. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 says, If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God? whom he has not seen. I think the problem with most of this is we're Christians, but what do we define as our brother and our sister? I think sometimes that's where things may get mixed up. But the thing that I want to say here is the world, the Bible says they will know we are Christians by our love not by how many scriptures we quote, not by how many memes we post, not by how many things we share on Facebook, but by demonstrating the love of Christ. So we need to demonstrate the love of God 
to one another so people can see what love looks like. Jesus is love, and if Jesus lives in us, we should reflect that love. Racism is evil, but it's real, very real. It's killing dreams and destinies, and it does exist in the church as well. But when we expose ourselves to the light, and he exposes our inner thoughts, and he exposes the things that we don't think of, that we don't even recognize that are inside of us, we're able to come to the Lord and he's able to take those things away from us. He's able to take away the pain of being a victim of racism and he's able to take away the hidden unconscious biases and the things inside of you that might make you a perpetrator of racism. I like the quote by Angela, Angela Y. Davis, which, which says, in a racist society, it is not enough to be non-racist. We must be anti-racist. But I take that it all said, it's not enough to be again. It's not enough to say, I don't sin. In fact, we all sin. We should be anti-sin, right? We should, God hates sin. We should stand against everything that God hates. And I don't mean stand by sharing something on Facebook. I don't mean stand by, by being vocal on only the latest sensational topic. I mean stand by getting down on your knees and interceding and praying when you say things are wrong. Letting God speak to you and then getting up and doing what he says you should do. You see, the interesting thing about shadows is that it's based on your position relative to the light source. To be under the shadow is based on your position relative to the, life, the light source. Since God's position does not change, he does not change, it has to be a position that you have to shift from. It has to be something that you need to step away from. Job chapter 12, verse 22 says, he uncovers deep things out of darkness and brings the shadow of death to light. He uncovers the deep things out of darkness and brings the shadow of death to light. It all goes back to he does it, not we. Our heart is deceitful. Our heart is wicked. We don't know the shadows, but God can expose it. He can uncover it but you have to move from your comfort place, move from where you are and come to him. He says, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins are as scarlet, I will make you whiter than snow. He's saying, we can discuss this. Look, I'm not afraid of your mess. We can discuss this. Come, let's talk about this. Let's discuss what's going on with you. And even though it might be really, really bad, I can make it really, really bad. Good. Job chapter 34, verse 22 says, There is no darkness, no shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. It means even if it's something deep within you, God can still expose it. Some of you are doing things in the secret places alcoholism, pornography all kinds of things going on behind the scenes that will never show on you when we come together as believers and worship. It doesn't show what God sees. And God has been trying to expose these things to you during this time and you're turning to the left, to the right. No one sees me and he sees you. He sees you and he's saying you should step out from under that shadow. John chapter five, verse six to nine says, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he, had, he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But when I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was well was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. Jesus is saying to you, do you want to be made well? Do you want to step out from under the shadow? You can have all the excuses. Jesus saw him that he had already been in that condition a long time. Maybe you've been in this shadow a long time. 
Maybe you've seen other people getting it. You could have all the excuses in the world, but Jesus is saying to you right now, do you want to be made well? Because if you do, just get up and move. Get up and move. Jesus wouldn't tell you to do something if you were not able to do it. Now, I know you can be talking about this depression is just overcoming me, and I'm not going to minimize the fact that there are things that may need medical intervention or spiritual divine intervention. I'm not minimizing that. But Jesus does say, right, which means he's able to give you and tell you exactly what you need to do to get out from under that shadow that you are in. Stop blaming what happened in the past. Stop blaming what's going on right now. Stop blaming COVID-19. Stop blaming the government or whatever other thing you can come up with. Do you want to be made well? Rise. Get up from under the shadow. Going back to John chapter 8, verse 12. Then Jesus spoke again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. It's very clear. He who follows me. So that rise, arise, just means get up and follow the word of God. Listen to what he says. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, the light. Leave the excuses behind. Psalm 91 verse 1. Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Are you under the shadow? I've talked about all kinds of shadows that could be the place you're in right now. And I pray that God is telling you what specific place you are in. But there is a shadow that you do want to be under. And that's the shadow of the most high. That's where the protection is. That's where the true life is. That's where true guidance is. We quote that a thousand may fall on our side, 10,000 may fall on our but it, but it will not come near me that he will give his angels charge over me. All these scriptures are true, but it starts with he who dwells in the secret place of the most high. What does that mean? You need to remain in God's presence, not wait for God's presence on Sunday when you step into a church building, but you need to be in God's presence in your home. You need to be in God's presence when you wake up, when you're going through the day, when you're going to bed at night. What does that mean? You need to pray. What does prayer mean? You need to continuously talk to God and listen to him. Many of us talk a lot. But do we listen? And then the word of God says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. So you need to talk to God, listen to him, and then do what he said you should do. Don't be afraid of his light. There is a shadow of the almighty that will protect you. And it has been protecting you. But don't take his protection for granted. His light can expose you at any time. So you choose. I'd like to end with the words from Jesus' culture song, Freedom. The lyrics says, step out of the shadows, step out of the grave, break into the wild and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love. For the spirit is here. Let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Bring all of your burdens Bring all of your scars, come back to communion, come back to the start. Chains will fall, prisons shake at the sound of Jesus' name. 
lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. And Isaiah said, and the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus, that wherever you may be, whatever shadow you may be under that is blocking the light of God from your life, whatever darkness that you might be in right now, I pray in the name of Jesus that the light of God will shine over you right now, will shine into your very heart, will break every chain. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. I pray freedom for you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that his light will shine so brightly and you will experience the peace of God and the strength to step out of the shadow and step into the shadow of the Almighty. I pray this in the name of Jesus. And I believe that the Holy Spirit will give you what it takes, the strength and the power to live for him. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and we can't do anything without the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I pray that even as we have a service later tonight, the Pentecost Sunday rally, that you will all tune in and get an extra, you know, seek the Lord more for his power and for his presence to do what he's asking you to do. Children's Church is taking place right after this on Hangout Meets. You should have received the invitation already. The Pentecost Sunday Rally is happening on both Facebook and YouTube on the Assembly of God New Jersey's Northeast section page. And I would just like to remind all of you that we are still taking the our tithes and offering. And that can be done if you go to the website, either through giving on Tithely, or you can also mail in a check or drop off a check to the church. We're also taking our regular missions offering on the fourth Sunday of the month and our COVID-19 love offering. I pray that God continues to bless you. I pray that he gives you the strength to be all that he called you to be. I pray that his will be done in your life. And I pray that we will all see each other and come together very soon and enjoy fellowship with one another. Enjoy your week. God bless.